May the 13th, 2020. As you're looking at images from a couple of days ago by, from Dr. Fritz Hemmerich, this is from the Tenerife Canary Islands in Spain. This is out in the Atlantic. It's Comet C2020Y4 Swan. Now, it just headed north. In other words, unlike what we're watching with Atlas, which is now six different objects that are being tracked uh, from the uh, JPL out of uh, Pasadena, California, Swan has held together. It's very bright. But you have uh, what's called um, your ecliptic, and Swan came up from the bottom. So now it came under the planets, up between Mercury and the sun, and it will dive back out and go back down. But what's happening now in the northern hemisphere is starting to become more and more visible. You can notice this is a ground-based image because you can see the trees there. So as we, I'll go and we'll look at the JPL model on this thing, but it's a beautiful long tail comet, very bright, much brighter than Atlas is now because as it broke apart, it lost its density and is not held together together. And you just don't have that bright comma in there. But again, this is uh, C20 Y4 Swan. Let's look at the JPL model on this thing. Again, this is the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, model. And uh, let's pull this up. You've got Earth, Venus, Mercury there, Mars uh, out in the fourth planet. And what's happened is Swan, which is right there. Let me pull this up and try to get the lines even. Has came from below the ecliptic of our inner solar system. And is rising as I step this forward. You'll see what I'm saying. It'll step forward, go up and reach that apex and come back down. And it's going to head back out and go between Earth and Mars on the orbit out. Now it's not bursting apart, there's no threat, but the reason I'm doing this video on SWAN is because you may be able to get some backyard images from uh, a good camera, maybe binoculars, but you saw again that uh, coming in out of the Tenerife Islands and of the Can uh, Canary Islands, that were they were very bright and very clear, and we'll uh, keep an eye on that, but again, it, uh, if we go back, just to make sure, play it backwards, we've got, uh, let me go back just a little further here, there. So what, it, what has happened is that as it came through the bottom ecliptic, it came between the Earth and Venus. So right now as it's rising, guys, these are the best times you're going to get to see it. But as it comes up and the gravity of the sun captures it and slingshots it back out into space, it will pass back through between the orbit of Mars and the Earth. So right now, guys, in the northern hemisphere, this is the time to get some good images of Swan. Now, these images of Atlas, this is 2019 Y4 Atlas. There's another comet called Atlas. And what happens, guys, is if the satellite, or excuse me, the observatory, the telescope is named Atlas, then the comet gets that uh, tag, same as uh, many others. But Michael Jaeger from Aust Austria took this, and this is the comet that's broken into six pieces now. And if you look at it, guys, it's still a very beautiful comet. It's got that green kind of color. But uh, what we're seeing is now about a 250 or 300,000 miles, over a quarter million miles spread out, between uh, a spread spread shot of six different main objects that are followed by many smaller ones now no one's saying that yet that it's going to hit the earth we you know was talking about how far the difference was between the initial object and the different pieces and we'll take a look at that but again this is comet to atlas is not as bright as it was because once it got close enough to the sun to start reacting to that slingshot effect that g-force of wrapping around the sun which speeds it up tremendously started breaking apart and you'll have this comet atlas meteor shower in generations to come now this is the jpl modeling for atlas y4 now we have six objects the initial um comet y4 atlas and then y4 a b c d and e so now we have six different objects that are tracking Again, you've got this quarter million mile spread shot of where they're predicting they're going. Within the next 15 to 17 days, we'll know more about it, and I will keep you updated. There's also another comet atlas that's been spotted, and we'll take a look at that. 
Now, this is a new comment called Atlas Y1, not Y4. And this is coming from Chris Schur uh, on May 8th out of Payson, Arizona. Been there many times. Love it. Beautiful area. All the way from there, Flagstaff to Phoenix. All of that area is really nice, especially the Sedona Oak Creek area. But uh, again, this is named Atlas Y1 because of who discovered it, the, the observatory. So there's a lot of uh, action going on right now. Also, guys, you actually have we have about five comets, and not counting the six different objects that are in uh, Atlas, but Comet C twenty nineteen U six, Comet Lemon, and notice that it's uh, yesterday's date. This is Jose J Chembo from Siding Spring, Austria. Now remember Comet Siding Spring, guys, that we, that we covered it several years ago as it approached Mars then it was called Siding Spring because of the observatory there. But this is a comet Lemon. You can see it right here, that same green glow. And guys, let me pull this up just a moment. Um, we're talking about Comet Swan coming into the Northern Hemisphere. This is Michael Doherty on yesterday, May the 2nd, from Orange County, California. This is just a Nikon D500, and he's getting these images. If you pull this in, it says... Uh, Taking this morning, 5 a.m. local time for the light polluted dawn twilight and the warning globalist moon or waning globalist moon at 69.3% of comet uh, C20FH1. Just making an appearance in the northern hemisphere, not an easy shot to get. For sure, I was surprised as to how good it came out. Nikon D500, 30 second exposure, ISO 100 frames, 5, 100, 135 millimeter processed with on one photo raw and lightroom again we'll pull this up so again just a nikon d500 but this thing is going to get brighter and the more advanced your equipment is the better you'll see it but just to go out now he said i remember light polluted sky if you're up in the upper elevations or sedona somewhere like that or up on bell rock especially I watched them from there. It's uh, whole, it's totally different, guys. You don't realize how many stars there are until you've seen it from the Bell Rock area or some other high mountain area that uh, is not light polluted. But uh, to see it like this in a light polluted area, guys, is uh, very unique. So we're kind of this is the month of the comets that are coming in and out. We're watching it, guys. You, you watch it and. Uh, I will do an update tomorrow on this and try to get some uh, exact coordinates for the telescopes that have the uh, computerized controls on them. But uh, you can go to um, skylive.com and they'll give you some of that information. It's a heads up, guys. We're watching it. You watch it. Be safe.